This video seeks to clarify the use of coordinate systems, especially when you're solving problems involving rotating reference frames. So let me write that. How you choose and draw refer reference frames is completely arbitrary. But once you show your reference frame, then you have to stick to writing every vector quantity using that reference frame. So let me present this via a simple example. So let's say we have a, a disk, okay? And this is made out of some solid material and you have a slot cut inside it, okay? And now inside this slot, you have, let's say, a pin that in some way is allowed to move inside this slot. So this pin is allowed to slide inside the slot and the slot itself, which is inside this rigid body, is allowed to rotate with some angular velocity, omega. So if I want to write, let's say, the absolute velocities of this pin, P over here, with respect to a fixed, rotate, fixed reference frame, um, I would have to pick an absolute or a fixed reference frame. Okay, so I'll call it F, which is our fixed reference frame. And here's my origin, okay. And I can write the velocity of the point P in the fixed reference frame. But I can also write the velocity of the pin P in some other reference frame. So for example, I can choose a reference frame that is actually attached to this plate. Okay, so I'm going to write this as lowercase o and lowercase x and y, and this would be uppercase x and this would be uppercase y. All right, so there are two reference frames over here. One is the rotating reference frame. So the rotating reference frame is lowercase o, x and y, this is our rotating frame and uppercase O, X and Y is our fixed or absolute frame. All right. Now, keep in mind that whenever you write the velocities to be used in vector equations, you have to write those velocities in fixed or absolute reference frame. Now, if you look at the velocity of the point P, in the rotating reference frame, it would look like this. Velocity of the P in, let me write, O, X, Y is some magnitude, let's say VP in O, X, Y. And its direction is along positive X direction because it's moving that way. So that will be lower I hat, right? So lower I hat is the unit vector along lower X, lower case X, and this is J hat, right? And I can say that this is I hat, uppercase, and this one is J hat. And clearly, I hat is not equal to I hat, right? And similarly, J hat, uppercase, is not equal to lowercase J hat. Why? Because even though their magnitudes are same, they are unit vectors, uh, their directions are different, right? But if I want to write one in terms of another, I can always do that. So how do I do it? Well, let's say if I want to write um, lowercase I hat in terms of uh, uppercase I hat and J hat, I would have to know the angle this is making from, let's say, uh, uppercase x-axis, right, fixed reference x-axis, so let's say that's theta. So this boils down to basically writing this vector i hat in the fixed reference frame, so that would be cosine theta, that's the component along x direction, and that's i hat plus sine theta j hat, right? Okay, and what about the lowercase j hat? Lowercase j hat would be written as, so let's figure out this angle. So this is theta, so this would be in theta as well, right? So that would be um, cosine theta, cosine theta along uppercase j hat, and then minus sine theta i hat, right? So I can always write these unit vectors in terms of other. So in this case, I'm writing lowercase i hat and j hat as a function of i hat and j hat. So i hat and j hat are written as function of uppercase i hat j hat, but I could have also written these two vectors as a function of some other function of i hat comma j hat okay so going from one reference frame to another reference frame is no big deal if you know how to resolve vector quantities along different directions okay now let's look at this in, an, in a problem because this was asked in the context of a particular problem from module 7 okay so let's say we, we are trying to solve the problem 6.150 okay so 6.150 is a problem where you have a disk and the disk is 
pin at point o, point A, so that's the center, and uh, there is a pin attached rigidly to the disk, which is free to slide inside a slot. So let me draw the slot. So the slot is actually centered about a point C, and this is how it goes. Okay. All right, and then the slot is inside this. So I'm going to make the pin P a little bit bigger so that it sort of looks like it's fitting inside the slot, All right? Okay, and then the this particular slot is connected via a gear. Okay, and this is not a full circular gear, but it's a small section of a gear. And then we have a rack. So rack is basically a gear of infinite radius, right? So as this disk rotates with some angular velocity and it's given as omega AB, then this pin P over here, so it's being called actually B, and this is D, and that's C, and this is the bar, okay? So as this disk rotates, the pin P that you have, a uh, pin B that you have over here will also rotate because it's rigidly attached to the disk. But inside this slot CD, the pin B will be actually sliding in and out. So this motion inside, inside this would be, you know, either this way or that way. So it's as if if you're attached to the to the slot CD, you were standing right on it, you will see the pin B either coming towards you or going away from you. All right. Now, the slot CD is constrained to rotate about point C. So point C is the point of rotation for this slot. So you have that rotation and now as this rotates so let's say we'll call this to be omega all right so that's the angular velocity of the cd as this rotates the bar is free to slide or reciprocate in the horizontal direction okay so the question is that you are given the angular velocity omega ab of the the disk okay and you have this configuration and in this configuration you have this distance from here to here as capital R, and then this distance, the vertical distance from here to here is given as H, okay? Uh, and the question is for this particular position, in this position, so in this, this position being that point B is horizontally uh, away from the point A, okay? Uh, and uh, the point C and point A are in the same vertical line. So we have to find omega, and we had to find the velocity of the bar. We had to find the velocity of the bar. And those are the two questions for the part A. And then for part B, we have to get the angular acceleration of the CD and the acceleration of the bar. Okay. So we'll just focus on the velocity analysis because you know acceleration analysis will proceed along a similar direction. So if I if I can, if I can show you how this will work for the velocity analysis, then I'm sure you can work it out for the acceleration as well. Okay. All right. So first thing we have to do is to understand whether we need translating reference frame or rotating reference frame and this is where you follow the procedure that i have taught you in module 7 and you apply the test so the test is that can you identify a rigid body or something that's sliding inside something that's rotating itself right so in this case the pin pin b over here uh, is sliding inside the rod cd and the rod cd is rotating with some angular velocity so this is a this is a good example of where you should use rotating reference frame. Okay. Now, next thing to do is once you identify that you have to use rotating reference frame is to show the reference frame. Now, in most of the examples that I have sold in previous videos, what I would do is I would show my rotating reference frame and I would align my fixed reference frame or absolute reference frame along with the rotating reference frame. So essentially they would be pointing the same direction at that particular instant. Okay. Now I am allowed to do that. I can always have the two frames shown coincidentally at, at any given configuration. But keep in mind that the fixed reference frame, of course, doesn't move, but the rotating reference frame moves. For this particular problem in, in your homework solution provided by the publisher, um, what they have done is they have shown rotating reference frame differently oriented from the fixed reference frame. But it's not a big problem. Okay. So in, in the solution, what they have shown is so they have a rotating reference frame, so that's a point O, and then x-axis 
uh, y axis is that way and the x axis for the rotating reference frame is this right so we know that we need to attach a rotating reference frame to the rigid body that's rotating on which sliding is happening in this case that rigid body is cd on which the sliding is happening so rotating ref reference frame is definitely aligned that way right now you could have chosen to show this as x and this as y that that way and that would be okay too it doesn't really matter which way you show but let's just stick to the way it is shown in the um in your textbook solution okay so we'll stick to that too all right now we also need a fixed reference frame because ultimately every velocity that is asked for so for example velocity of the v bar that's asked for over here that velocity has to be expressed in a fixed reference frame same thing with the acceleration of the point b and the angle acceleration and so on right so your textbook shows um the fixed reference frame to be this way so that's uppercase x and this is your going that way vertically up is the uppercase y right so let me draw these reference frames separately over here so you can see it clearly so that's uppercase x that's o and that's uppercase y and your rotating reference frame on the other hand is drawn along oh that's actually y that's not what x um, so that's y and the x is this way okay all right, so this could be some angle theta, which is same as this angle over here, right? So center line and this vertical line, that's the angle between the two is theta over here. So I can always pick my ref, my unit vectors along these directions. So I will pick my unit vector along this to be j hat as the convention and this, and then for the fixed coordinate axis, it will be i hat and this will be you know j hat. And as I showed you before, you can always write one unit vector in terms of other two unit vectors, right? So that's not a problem. So now the analysis after this point proceeds where you have a mix of all these coordinate systems. So for example, if you look at the velocity of the point B, okay, so velocity of the point B, okay, let me just you know show it a little bit uh, differently. So velocity of the point B can be written in two ways. So one is from the perspective of the the disk AB because point B is rigidly attached to the disk AB. So in this case, it's easy to write. So we'll use a point A as a reference point, which is fixed. So that's zero plus omega AB K hat cross R of B with respect to A. So that's omega AB K hat cross. What is R of B with respect to A? Now R of B with respect to A can be written in a couple of ways. Okay. So in your textbook, R of B with respect to A is written as this distance R. So that's the distance from A to B. Okay. And then the unit vector along that is uppercase I hat. Okay. So this becomes omega AB times R and K cross I hat is equal to uppercase J hat. So that you get that. Okay. Now, this is, this is fairly straightforward because you know that with respect to the rotating rigid body AB, the point B is actually moving up. Right, it's moving up. That's the direction of the velocity of the point B, as omega AB is shown in the counterclockwise direction. Now, at this point, I could have just chosen to work with the rotating reference frame unit vectors, and this is what I do in the examples that I have solved in in the previous videos. Okay, so what I have done in the previous videos is, instead of writing it like this, I would actually do it slightly differently. So I would write this as omega AB k hat. And then R of B with respect to A, instead of resolving in the fixed reference frame, I would resolve it in my rotating reference frame. All right, so let's do that. So what is R of B with respect to A? Let me choose a different color for that. All right, so, so let's say I pick a blue color, right? So R of B with respect to A is this vector. All right, I'll pick this one. So this is R of B with respect to A. And it's pointing along I hat direction, right? Uppercase I. But I have, to, I have to resolve it in the lowercase um, I hat J hat direction. So, so how do I do that? So I know this angle is theta, right? So this angle, so this will be 90 minus theta. So this will be theta over here. So R of B with respect to A would be the distance R itself, right? That times cosine theta I hat minus R of sine theta J hat. So now I simplify it. So that would be this. And then cosine theta k cross i is j minus uh, uh, sine theta and k cross j is minus i hat. So that becomes plus i hat. 
So that's the velocity of the b. So I could have written velocity of the b either this way or I could have written it that way. And both of them are completely equivalent to each other because I'm just choosing to write my velocity in different quant system. So you can just express all of your velocities, everything in the uh, in the rotating reference frame if that's convenient for you. So you don't have to sort of mix these different um, uh, vectors, all right? Okay, so now let's proceed further. Um, we, want, we want to write the velocity of the b now with respect to the slotted arm, okay? So velocity of the b with respect to c, which is zero, if it's a fixed point, would be plus omega k hat, which we don't know, cross r of b with respect to c, plus it has some relative velocity on the arm cd, right? Because the point b is sliding inside cd, okay? All right, so let's write this omega k hat. Now, what is r of b with respect to c? It's this distance from here to here. So let's call that L. And we can compute L because we know R and H. So L is actually equal to square root of R squared plus H squared. Okay? Because we have this triangle, right? You have, you know, this is R, this is H, and that's the L. This is the right angle. And this is point B, and that's point C. Now, this, well, I also have to write the uh, vector, right? So let me erase that. So what is this vector? So R of B, C, what is that direction? Well, that direction is entirely along j hat. So I could simply write this as lj hat. Okay. So now we're just writing everything in terms of lowercase unit vectors. That's that's with respect to rotating reference frame. Plus v relative, we don't know the magnitude, so we'll just call it v relative. But we know the direction. The direction is also along b c, so that will also be j hat. Okay, so that's velocity b. Now you have two velocity vector expressions for the same point, point point uh, b. So we can equate those two. So when I equate those two, what do I get? I get omega a b r sine theta i hat i'll write i hat plus first and then cosine theta j hat equal to omega l and k cross j is minus i hat so i'll write that plus v relative j hat okay now we can equate the apples to apples and oranges to oranges so we get omega a b times r sine theta equal to minus omega l and we get omega a b times r cosine theta equal to v relative okay so at this point i realize that uh, omega could actually not be negative uh, because i can see that disk is rotating counterclockwise and so cd should also be rotating counterclockwise at least at this instant so looks like i have uh, made a sign mistake somewhere here okay i think i i know it so i hat is actually r cosine theta uh, minus so it's not r minus actually it's plus r sine theta j hat because that's the vector and this results positively along i hat and j hat so this would actually be negative okay that will be negative so which means that uh, um, over here this would be minus sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat sorry about that and that means that this would be minus omega ab r sine theta and that means both of this will become plus so that gives you omega as omega ab times r sine theta over L, which is the square root of R square plus H square. And then this will give us V relative as omega AB times R cosine theta. Okay. So if it is convenient for you, you can just show your fixed reference frame and you can show your rotating reference frame, whichever way you want. And then you can do all your analysis in just one reference frame that you want to. Okay. But keep in mind that uppercase I hat is not same as, you know, lowercase I hat unless you choose to show both the quant system along the same direction. So what you could have done differently over here is that you could have said that, okay, instead of having this shown this way and the rotating reference frame shown that way, all right, I'm going to have both of them be aligned at that particular instant. And that's perfectly okay too. So I'm going to redraw this whole uh, figure once more to show you what I mean by that. So I have my disk and here is my point A. And here's my point B. So this time I'm going to draw the slot first. So here's my slot. And now I'm going to extend this. So here's my point C. Right, so let me draw this a little bit bigger. And that's here. And this is attached to a gear. And then I have my rack. Which we call bar. 
All right, so I'm going to show my reference frame over here now like this. So here's my point O, which is same as point C, and I'm going to show my lowercase x that way and lowercase y that way, okay? And you know, this is how I would probably solve the problem if I, if I hadn't seen the homework solution. I would do this, and then I would also show my fixed reference frame along the same direction. It's not a problem. So just keep in mind that if you show the fixed reference frame that way, then fixed reference frames, of course, will be fixed, right? So this is the part that is fixed. But after an instant, your rotating reference frame, which is attached to the slot, will be rotating. Okay, so if you do this, then there's no confusion because I hat and I hat and J hat and uppercase J hat are at this particular instant exactly the same. And you could have done all your analysis either using this or this, and it, it wouldn't make any difference. So the, so the key lesson is that once you show a reference frame, then you do all your analysis using that reference frame, and you express your answer in that reference frame. Okay? So over here, we have the V relative. We have the V relative uh, written like this, omega a, b, r, cosine theta. If you want to write the entire vector quantity, you would write it like this, V relative equal to omega a, b, times r cosine theta and that's along um, j hat direction right over here using previous reference frame so this would be you know j hat but if you want to write this in terms of fixed reference frame you could do that too all you have to do is resolve the the lowercase j hat along x and y direction so this is the lowercase j hat so what's lowercase j hat lowercase j hat over here is equal to this angle is theta so that will be cosine theta uppercase j hat plus sine theta uppercase i hat. So you just substitute this from here into here and you will have an answer in fixed reference frame now. So this is, let me write that, cosine theta. So let me write the uh, first the i hat. So that's sine theta i hat plus cosine theta j hat. Okay.